Hey guys, how are you? I'm here to finally bring you the what is on my iPad mini video. I know you guys have been wanting that for a while now, and I think it's time to finally deliver. I do have a lot of stuff to say about this device, but this video is strictly going to show you the apps that I use on a daily basis on this thing. So let's jump right into it. As you can see here, this is my lock screen. Let's start right from the top. We got messages, which I use occasionally. Just want to make sure it doesn't go to sleep here. We got FaceTime, which I actually have yet to use. Um, the photo app, which I don't use as much on here as I do on my iPhone, but it's, it's good to have. Camera app, maps, of course, which I haven't touched. Uh, clock, again, I haven't really touched that on here either. Um, so we got photo booth here. We have calendar, and now this is the first third-party app, which is Tweetbot. So let's take a look at that. So this is my Twitter client of choice. I used to only use the Twitter app that was actually made just by Twitter. The real reason that I really enjoy this is the ability to do this. If you hit my face, I have the option to change to other Twitter accounts that I run, such as iconography or the school newspaper at my college, which is awesome. And you can tweet from all of those in a matter of a few gestures, so that's pretty awesome. So, definitely recommend Tweetbot. And then right here we have Jasmine, which is actually a YouTube client. I was recommended this by some people on Twitter as well. If you take a look here, you can look at your videos, you can look at subscriptions for some reason. I'm having a little bit of a, there we go. But if you can see, you can scroll through all your latest subscriptions, you have a list of all the people that you subscribe to on over here, and it's very, very intuitive, very easy to pick up on, works in both portrait and landscape mode, so I would definitely recommend Jasmine. This here is Pinterest, I'm sure a lot of you know what this is, and I'm actually pretty happy with it on the iPad, it's a lot bigger, it's a lot easier to use than on the small screen on the iPhone. So moving on, we have Flipboard, which is something that I've heard a lot of hype about until I got the iPad. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. It allows me to look at Tumblr and then certain specific websites like Mashable or CNET. Everything flips, as you can see. So here are the latest stories on Mashable. You can just flip through. Gives you like a magazine type style. So, I, I, I've been enjoying it. If you're looking to do news, this is a great option. So moving on, we have Padgram, which if you hit here, only works in landscape. So, these are all the people that I follow on Instagram. Now, this is an Instagram app that allows you to view, comment, to like, but it doesn't actually allow you to produce. But I would definitely recommend this. It's free, which I haven't been mentioning, which are free. Jasmine, Flipboard, Padgram, all free. Tweetbot is the only paid app so far that we've gone through. So, then we have Reminders, the Weather Channel, which is like an obvious thing. Um, the Weather Channel is free, obviously. Notes, Pages, which, I, uh, how much is that? $4.99 or $9.99? Um, but the thing that I love about this is this is the main reason why I can take notes in my classes with my iPad instead of having to use my MacBook Pro now. It looks a little better when we are in landscape. So as you can see, I have different documents for each of my classes. Like media History, Public Relations, and Media Theory. So when you go into one of them, you just scroll through. Um, and you can have an endless document made in pages that can be exported to a document file, emailed to your computer, and when you tap it, a decent sized keyboard comes up. I don't really have a hard time typing on it. I would definitely recommend pages if you want to do any type of document work on your iPad. Um, we have Newsstand, which I don't use. I downloaded a copy of Oprah just to try it. We have Podcasts, which I actually had to download, but it was free from Apple. We have iTunes, Contacts videos. We have Wallpapers HD, which is actually a free application. That's where I got this wallpaper. Then right here we have Game Center, which I haven't touched. Calculator Pro, which is a free version of a calculator app, but it looks later. Looks just like the iPhone version, which is very cool. Nice big buttons. Um, and then we have an astrology app, which this is a paid app. It's called Astrology Zone. I'm really into that stuff. It's only adapted for the iPhone, as you can see. So then we have Settings, Safari, Mail, App Store, Music. I know you guys are going to say I have to read my email. Anyway, so moving on, we have PNC, which is banking. And then we have a little group called Social Apps. We have Google+, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Skype. And then iMovie. This is a paid application from Apple. I, now that I think about it, I do think it is $4.99. I haven't made a project yet. 
but I do plan on doing some vlogging. This is very intuitive. I've used it on my iPhone before. It works, it works very well, especially if you're using it in landscape mode. Now, GarageBand, which I actually have used, I have an example to show you guys. Yeah, I use this to record Garrett's voiceover on the iPad using a little USB adapter and the Meteor mic, which is pretty awesome. So that's the main reason why I have GarageBand to record people in the field, but works like a charm. You can export it, you can send it via email to yourself, which is what I did, but works perfectly. Definitely recommend it if you're doing any type of audio work and you wanna do it on the go. This is the ABC player, which I use on an almost daily basis, watching General Hospital, Modern Family, um, what other ABC shows? I watch a lot of ABC shows. Well, Once Upon a Time, of course. So yeah, um, then we have Hulu Plus, which I actually recently subscribed to and I really like it. It's like Netflix, but for current TV shows and the current season that it's on. It does have some older TV shows like Cosby Show and stuff that are ended. It shows you up here the shows that were on last night, which is cool. So then we have Netflix, which is an obvious one. Xfinity, which is a way to watch on-demand television if you have Comcast. Both, all of these are free actually, ABC Player included. Um, then we have Vimeo, which is also a free application. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Vimeo, but it's a competitor to YouTube, sort of. This here is the Kindle app, so let's switch back. Oh, you know what? We don't have to switch back. We have a bunch of books here, um, with Kim Zimmer, which is a soap opera star, her memoir. Uh, we have a YouTube guide, Thank You Economy, Mind Hacks, Unbearable Lightness, which is by Porsche, Portia de Rossi. Um, then we have Dropbox, which is a free application. It's kind of like cloud storage. Um, ABC News, which is cool because every day you get a notification of things that happened this morning. WordPress, which looks pretty sweet on here. I haven't really explored. This is just me with my um, college blog that I have to run for my class. Again, free, free, free. Um, creative apps. So let's take a look at these. Um, we have Sketch, which I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with this. I'm trying to make sure this video isn't a hundred years long. Um, let's start with blank. I have this on my iPhone. I was pretty good friends with the guys who developed this a while back. And it has developed to be even better. So it's, it's very... It, it, it allows you to doodle and you can add text. And then paper, which I haven't explored yet, but was recommended by Max McIntosh as a sort of digital notebook type of thing that you can have multiple pages and you can draw on it with different types of tips and stuff. Yeah, like you have, um, you have to buy the tips, I guess. Um, games, this is free Fruit Ninja, free Angry Birds, and something called Restaurant Story, which I don't even want to open it. Oh, I guess I will. Um, because, I don't know, I haven't touched it in a while, and when you don't touch it in a while, it gets all crazy. You pretty much get to run your own restaurant, but it's like, you, ugh, they put you into this situation where, like, you have to buy coins or else you can't continue or something like that. Ew, look, see, I haven't played in so long. I'll get it later. Then my food is all nasty and stuff. And then lifestyle. We have the free eBay app, the free Amazon app, Yelp, which is a location application. Then we have the Target application. The Target one I actually really like. I want to show you real quick. Um, free as well. This guy, you touch me bobbles. Um, but you can just, you know, search. You can search by products. You can search by genres, electronics, uh, computers, desktops, I guess let's say. And then it changes and it shows you everything. It shows you all of their sales. You can look up store availability. So it's pretty cool. So anyway, guys, that is everything that is on my iPad mini. I'm trying to keep it pretty simple because I only have a 16 gigabyte version. And I just kind of like simplicity. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any app recommendations, leave those in the comments below. And maybe I'll feature them in a future What's on My iPad video. Any specific iPad mini questions, you can leave them below. And I will address them in the future iPad mini review videos that I have coming. I want to also talk about the Wii U pretty soon. And a Christmas wish list video is on the queue as well. So hit subscribe so you can get those videos. My social links are down below. You guys are awesome. Thank you again for watching and being so patient during college. As always, goodbye.